welcome to Series 6 of Property Elevator, the show where we give budding property developers the chance to pitch their deals to our six seasoned property professionals. These are John Howard, Ranjan Bhattacharya, Paul Mahoney, Nicholas Woolwork, Hayley Andrews and Scott Marshall, or who we call our property investment angels. Now, we all know property is not a game for the faint-hearted. With hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pounds at stake, yes, the rewards can be great, but if it goes wrong, it can go very wrong very quickly. I am Scott Marshall, Founder and Managing Director of Roma Finance, one of the UK's leading specialist finance non-bank lenders. In my career, I've done almost 20,000 transactions, and as Roma Finance, we've done um, two and a half thousand transactions for almost 500 million pounds worth of property deals. I'm here because I love to lend. I like the fact that you have, you know, you have not said it in part of your pitch, but you're a chartered uh, management accountant. You invest a lot in yourself. You invest a lot in your education in terms of the property courses that you've been on. Hi, I'm Paul Mahoney. I'm the founder and chairman of the UK's leading property investment advisory company, Nova Financial Group. I'm also an experienced property investor and developer. I mean, the 10% return is about as bad as one of Ranjan's jokes, but, um, you know, just from the perspective of being an experienced investor and developer, yep. that just devalues us completely. Hi, I'm Nicholas Woolwork, investor, developer and co-founder of wealthlabs.co.uk, one of the UK's leading wealth creation and property training companies. In terms of, you know, your bill costs and things like that, how have you split between, say, the, the uh, existing build and the new build? in terms of, sort of the construction cost, how much higher is the new build element that you've quoted? My name is Ranjan Bhattacharya. I'm an investor and developer for the last 30 years. I specialize in converting defunct commercial buildings to residential use. I'm the founder of Succeed in Property, the UK's leading training course provider for commercial property investors and developers. I agree with what everyone said. It's a debt deal, this one, not a equity deal. And the reason for that is because you've de-risked it. You've already owned the site and you've got the planning and you're ready to go and you're stripped out. Hi, I'm Hayley Andrews. I'm the co-founder of Your Freedom Empire, a business and property training organisation. I've been in the industry for 20 years. I'm a developer and property entrepreneur. With a good architect, yeah. um, you will be able to get seven two beds. Yeah. I know that they will sell better. Yeah. I know that they will rent better. Hello, I'm John Howard, and I've been a property developer and investor for over 40 years. During that time, I bought and sold over 4,000 properties in 84 different locations across the UK. That makes me the most experienced and most successful angel of them all. Although I wasn't in the studio, you will be hearing from me after each pitch. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to the series finale of Property Elevator. We've seen loads of deals and we've had loads of drama. Let's see what we've got in store today. Walter, welcome to Property Elevator. Thank you. Uh, tell me firstly, where have you come from today? Uh, from London today. So what I want to talk about today is we're looking to ask for £670,000 to help us buy a site to build three detached family homes, each with five bedrooms. Uh, the GDV is about 2.7 million and the expected profit is about 240,000 pounds after tax. Well, we're going to send you in shortly, uh, wishing you all the best in Thank there you. and I'll speak to you when you get out. So off to Wales we go for three new build houses. Uh, Walter is coming in to see us. He's after 670,000 uh, pounds for 50% profit share. Uh, should we meet him? Let's do it. Yes. Yep. Hello, I'm Walter Davis. Um, I'm here looking to ask you to invest £670,000 to um, help us buy and develop three houses in South Wales. Um, some information about the deal. Um, the site has just come onto the market. It was off market until this morning. Um, we were hoping to secure it off market, but we haven't been able to. The, the three houses are all five bedrooms. One is slightly larger than the other two. It's in a town called Porthcawl, which is just west of Cardiff. Um, it's a very desirable town in South Wales, one of the most affluent. Uh, the location is about five to 10 minutes walk to the beach. And it's a very, very big tourist hotspot area. 
So a little bit of background um, on the team. So the three of us in the team, myself, uh, Kenneth Thomas, who's our construction director, and Richard Andrews, our architecture director. Um, together, we have built and sold four houses in Rantwick Major, which is about 10 miles away from Porthcawl. We have a very good track record of selling things off plan. We like um, starting to market relatively soon after a development has started, with the aim that we can secure some sales off plan. We often increase the price of the sites compared to a RICS valuation to account for things like bill cost inflation or just hope value. We might find somebody who will come along and offer us the uh, you know, asking price. I'm going to declare my hand. I don't think that, well, I don't think that the return is high enough for me. I also think that you would struggle with... What is the return? 19%. 15% annualised. Yeah annualized 15 percent um so for i think you would struggle um to achieve the numbers and the return is already too low and so it's not for me but thank you for your pitch um i put in the the asking price is 850 i put in the projected purchase price at 800,000. Um, when i was discussing an offer this morning with um, the estate agent we were talking about an offer starting with a six um, for the bill costs I put in trying to be conservative. So the numbers on the spreadsheet are probably the worst case scenario. So I'm expecting to buy the site for less than the projected. But what's your level. resale value of the flat of the houses? What you you're targeting? Um, 2.7 million GDV. Individually? So one at a million pounds and the other two at 750. Cool. How, how big is this area? and the surrounding similar type areas? Porthcourt is quite a big town. How many, what's the population? I don't know the population. Or thereabouts, what, is it, what would you compare it to? Slough. Okay. I did some brief research on house prices in this area, similar size, but probably slightly higher, at the very top end of the market. Now, is that what you're building here, very top end? Are we talking the best in this location? We like to target ourselves as a boutique player. Um, and so building very good quality homes, yes. Okay, because there's, there's three houses for sale in this town that are anywhere close to these prices and two of the three are lower than these prices. So that's concerning for me um, because you are at the very top end of the market which, which has inherent risk associated with it. Also, so far as I know, so far as just Wales as a whole, you're pretty much top end of the market. So, so, so top end of the country. And, and that concerns me a little bit as well in today's market because you know you could compare it to for example central London it's very different to the rest of London but it's usually the first one to fall in price substantially in a recession um, so that that's a little bit concerning can you try to give me some comfort around that our recent development in Lantua Major um, the majority we, we sold four houses how recent when um, we completed the last sale in September last year. Um, three of the four buyers were cash buyers that didn't have a mortgage. Um, and at this end of the market, we've often found that people don't have a mortgage. Um, and so it's more about the location and the quality of the property rather than being a mortgage buyer or not. Um, so to give you some comfort, not sure what more I can give you. No, no fair enough. I, I think just you mentioned about the they've listed the land for eight fifty. Yep. But you're going to buy it in the sixes. Does that not translate somewhat to finished houses as well? You know, the price is coming down. We put in an offer which has been turned down right. at sixes. Um, I'm very conscious that at the moment I don't have an investor, mm. so I'm hoping that one of you will consider. Um, and I was really expressing my interest at that level. Yeah. Um, before coming to present to you today, I had another deal that I was looking at, which fell out of bed yesterday. And uh, I was suggested to suggest this alternative deal. And on that one, we found it was a cash buyer and they were buying the site above the asking price. I think that sites with potential, with good potential in good locations, are seeing very strong demand. Yeah, okay, just one last point on the numbers. It, it seems to me there is relatively strong likelihood that these might not be worth 900, they might just be worth about 800. 
when you look at what's for sale today, not even sale prices, just list prices, if that happens, your 300 grand profit disappears. So there's zero profit in this deal if these houses are only worth 800 each. That's and where I was coming for from. For those reasons, it, it's not one for me. Nicholas, if I was to go and buy a million pound house, it wouldn't be in Wales, but then that doesn't mean it's not for someone. I think it's really hard to say anything different to what the guys have said already. It, you're just at the most expensive houses on the street, on, in the town, in the country. And that's a serious concern with your projections. Appreciate what you said about being conservative on, on some of the costs. I mean, we could also say that the flip side, there's, you know, we are having mass inflation at the moment. We don't know what's going to happen with the war in Ukraine. Um, we don't know what's happening with interest rates, how long they'll stay reasonably high. There's lots of sort of negatives as well that we could counter your conservative numbers. And that's why numbers should always be on the conservative side so that there's always some, um, you know, risk covered off there. You know, you've got the existing house, that one we can see in the picture, actually, that's an existing house in the middle of your plot as well, isn't it? That's um, correct, yeah. And so I see that being a bit of a painful neighbour um, when you're building literally on every side of their boundary. Have you had any discussions with them? Uh, who owns that plot? Is it just a homeowner? Um, it's the person who's selling the land. Ah, okay. Why aren't they building them themselves? I don't know the answer to that. Okay, maybe, maybe they haven't you got need the to go appetites, and find the answer to that. Know, because quite... if you, yeah, maybe you should go and find the answer to that because it, it's a bit of a red flag to me that they've got a plot of land on their back door. They would be able to control the build. Um, if they own the land, they can finance it 100%. So it'd be interesting to know what the reason is. In fairness, not everybody is. thinks like you though, Nicholas. Uh, is there planning permission on this? Planning permission exists, yeah. Did it they was... build that house? Uh, no, that house has been there for a while. Okay, so they, they, they've gone and got this planning on their own land. Correct. Yes. Mm. Okay, yeah, interesting. They went to appeal to get it. So they wanted to happen then? They want it to happen, yeah. Okay, so they're not going to be problem neighbours then. So that's good to know. It's important to know. Um, yeah, it's not one for me either. Um, I think it's far too risky. Uh, if you're building three average houses in an average town that's got plenty of demand and the numbers looked a little bit better than this, you know, in the sort of 20, 25% range, it might be of interest. Um, but yeah, not, not, not at this level, I'm afraid, thank you. I think if you sold out on the previous uh, development last year, I mean, the interest rate environment, a lot of things have changed since then, and projecting to when these will actually be built, things are likely to change even further. I am not interested in developing properties at the upper end of any market anywhere, um, because I think that's the most at risk at the moment. And I suspect that these owners of this property um, have gone down a particular route and then decided that they are well aware of the risks of building out themselves and are looking for someone else to take on. So I would hold fire and go back to them with an even cheaper offer to buy the land because it's not worth it, I think, at your intended purchase price. I don't think they'll sell it to anyone at that. I, I, I totally agree, that's exactly it. That They've massaged the asking price of the end product up. That's I think that's what you're doing to justify the high asking price. You need to drive the price of the land down. It's not one that I would be interested to fund and I'd probably take on board the comments that have been made by some very experienced people here that actually, you know, clearly with the the CVs and the credibility that you that all three of you have got that are doing this project, I think there's better use for your talent on other sites that I'm sure you can find um, either in this area or somewhere else. But I'd kind of stick to some um, a market where you rent that a you're buying well, b you can kind of control effectively the in some ways the liquidity of the end product because you're going after a, a more of a um, an area where there's going to be more demand for the for the for what you're building. Unfortunately, it hasn't been an offer for you today, but I hope you take forward some of the points that were raised and I wish you best of luck, but I think you need to get this at a lot cheaper price, quite frankly. I think you've got somebody though who is, who's done it before um, and there's a, a decent team around him. If I'm honest, I would have thought that they would have and should have known some of the stuff that we've actually said to them. To, to him, they're thinking, to him today. They're thinking with their hearts, not their head. Yeah, but also I suppose when you think about it from the perspective of he is a developer and a builder, if he was doing this himself, fine. 
there's enough money in it for him, just, just not for an investor to come in on a JV basis. I would even argue but against that. I would argue against that. He should JV with the owner. I think so. uh, 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 my point is builders can work on tighter yeah, margins. Yeah, potentially that's a solution. That's a solution. Because re really, I, I feel for a site like that, um, you shouldn't be paying anything more than 400 to 450 in the current climate. And that would be the, that was my feeling. His bill costs were realistic. You know, he's looking to 185, 190 pound a square foot. Um, his end values were toppy, but they had to be toppy because he's paying so much for the site. He's massaged the numbers. The vendor probably work. thinks they're super smart it's and they've got this planning. Do. It's tempting to do. <laughs> oh, we can make a luxury it. product, stick another 100 grand on. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it doesn't work like that. A lot of people are looking at deals and saying, you know, th th this may have been a great deal one year ago. Mm. You know, mm. But they're not looking at, and, they're, and they're thinking, oh, right, this is great. I'm getting this opportunity now. But what they should be looking at is... I don't think it was a great deal well, <laughs> one year ago. No, I mean, to buy that <laughs> land. I mean, people are not um, forward... Um, uh, pricing people I, I think the market's moving from a buyer's market to a seller's market and people look at deals and they think well it may have been worth doing a year ago but it's not worth doing today with what we know is ahead uh, over the next year and that's one of the big problems I think with this deal I think even if he did it himself there's not enough in it I think it, 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 it always be, worries me to it always worries me worries me when someone says that that, that I'm going to bust the ceiling of what properties achieve in that area with the product that I'm yeah, building. Yeah, good luck to and you. And even if you, you are that. going Absolutely. to do that, forecast it so that you're realistic. Absolutely. You, know, you can aim for the Absolutely. highest market. But, but your numbers your have got to work on the lower, on the lower figures, the realistic market values yeah. for the... And, and or at least show that this is worst case scenario. And what, absolutely, and there was no sensitivity I, in there at all. Yeah, exactly. I know a certain person that certainly wouldn't be buying at the top of the market. Now I feel sorry for Walter because he's come in with a relatively simple, straightforward deal. The problem is none of those angels have got any experience in building new properties. And they're worried that bill costs are continuing to rise. And they are right about that. But I thought Walter got a, 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 a tough, had a tough gig. And uh, I feel a bit sorry for Walter because if I was there, I think I could have made that deal work somehow between myself and Walter and his team, because he's got a good professional team. Sorry, Walter. Walter, how did you find the experience then? It was a really interesting experience. Yeah, really, really interesting experience. I know you didn't get the funding that you wanted today, which is a shame, but um, did you learn anything from the angels and is there anything that you might do differently going forwards with the deal? I was too conservative with my numbers. Okay. Which meant that the returns were not uh, as high as they wanted mm -hmm. and so it almost just said well if returns are not high enough we're not interested in doing the deal so I had been very conservative and assumed that we would pay close to the asking price for the site in reality I haven't agreed that yet mm -hmm. so maybe I should have been more elaborate on the you know put in a lower purchase price reduce the costs a bit more um, and then the returns would have been higher and so people would have, the, some of the angels might have invested. Hi Jason, welcome to Property Elevator. Thanks for inviting me on the show. So tell me, where have you come from today? Today I've come from Cambridge, um, sorry not too far to come to London today. Brilliant and what are you looking for in terms of an investment partner? So today I have a commercial pub conversion to nine residential dwellings. Um, we already own the site and we're uh, going to front the 360,000 uh, of our own money and we're looking for the remaining 50%, so another 360 from the angels today for a 10% return on their money. Excellent. And what is the potential profit then for our angels if they were to invest? So because we already own the site and we're putting 50% uh, of the capital ourselves, it's going to be 10% for the return on their money. Um, and also the reason why I'm on this show as well, um, because I have a lot of good connections. I have my own YouTube channel, which has slightly shy of 30,000 subscribers. Um, and I also have my own estate and lessings agent in Cambridge. So I'm hoping to really work with an angel today, grow the sort of working relationship and hopefully uh, much better projects to invest in in the future together as well. 
Excellent. So you're going to rival Ranjan a little bit with his YouTube numbers, aren't you? <laughs> I'm not you? going to match him quite yet. <laughs> and so uh, what made you apply for the show? Um, it's really just to sort of get myself out there, build the relationship with an angel and also to sort of leverage off their experience uh, with a project of this size as well. And what would it mean to you if you were to get the investment today? I'll be, of course, absolutely delighted and yeah, looking forward to sort of working with the angels. Pleased to meet you, Jason. Looking forward to hearing your pitch. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, so today, what I have is a commercial pub conversion in Nottingham city centre, right by the Lace Market. So this is a uh, pub conversion into nine residential dwellings, eight one beds and one three bedroom apartments. This has already full planning permission granted. Um, so this uh, project is, uh, this property site is actually owned by myself already. I own it with my uncle in a limited company within a group structure, which uh, having been given guidance by tax consultants. Uh, the GDV, we expect this to be coming in at about 1.58 million. Um, so this is based on 300,000 for the three bed and the eight one beds are valued at 160,000 each. Uh, this has been verified and checked with local estate agents. We have already um, sort of made a start on everything. So professional fees is about 62 that we've invested in. For the enabling works for phase one, we've already partially demolished part of the building and fully stripped out everything. So there's no hidden uh, items involved. So we spent about 120 there already. Um, and at this point, we, we already have the detailed quote due to come back from the contractors uh, for, the, for the final build. We're looking at the remaining left is 720,000 pounds. Um, we are going to invest half of this money ourselves, so another 360 from ourselves. And today we are looking to uh, raise funds for another 360 for the remaining 50%. This works out to be £160 per square foot, which uh, we, we believe is more than uh, re very reasonable. And at the same time, because the, all the hidden items are already sort of un unraveled, so we're very sort of confident on that, along with uh, the fact that we also have a local project manager on board as well. So everything has been de-risked. Um, and today, yeah, I know that I can actually potentially get development finance. Um, we've been quoted at 0.85%, but at the same time, I wanted to sort of come forward, meet the angels and just basically develop a working relationship. So, cause at the end of the day, I'm asking for 360,000 for 10% return, which might not be the most attractive, but I'm hoping to sort of start a working relationship on future project projects together. Um, I, just a bit of background about myself. I have another, uh, sorry, I have a YouTube channel, uh, slightly shy of 30,000 subscribers, so can't quite match Ranjan's just yet. Um, so so we, we work with a lot of overseas investors in Hong Kong. Um, and I also have my own estate and lettings agent in Cambridge, in central Cambridge. So we work with a lot of small developers as well. So there's a lot of, projects going on and yeah I'm just hoping that this could be a start of a working relationship with one of the angels. Great pack, love you, love your experience, um, uh, love that you're a YouTuber as well and you're pushing <laughs> you. Ranjan's kind of uh, view, <laughs> view levels, what are you at now, about 60,000? I'll you, keep pushing. You haven't got that long to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so thank you for this. Um, I'm going to actually focus on why you've gone for one beds and not two beds in this area. I know this area quite well and from my experience two beds tend to work better yeah. both from rental and resale. Yeah, yeah. we did actually obviously go through pre-app and we had planning consultants involved so we actually this, this project actually started way back in 2019 so we obviously um, yeah, engaged in planning consultant worked very closely with the architects and this was the sort of uh, the plans that were going to maximize our sort of returns and, and at the same time like it's in a very central Nottingham location, so we're very confident. Obviously, the rentals will go very well. I agree. I think Hayley's totally wrong with that. I mean, two beds is family oh. homes for resale. I think you want to give yourself maximum exit options, don't you? You want to be able to let them out and maximise the rental income. And one beds, if they're in demand in such a central location, you don't have a problem mm. selling those either. 
Yeah, but in my experience, actually, one beds don't sell as good in this particular area as yeah. two beds. And actually, from a rental point of view, there is an oversupply of one beds on the market. That's mm -hmm. where yeah, the question yeah. kind of came in. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I get the question. Um, and on, on the, because our, our long term strategy is to basically convert and hold. So we're going to rent it out. And based on the, the floors, uh, um, sorry, on the last page of the pack, you, you'll see the drawings. But based on, in total, it's 4,853 square feet. So the, the side that is being kept, actually, uh, the left-hand side per the drawing, it's the, the ground floor is going to be the three bedroom. And then basically each floor on each side is going to be one bedroom, one bedroom. So the two bedroom uh, sort of design might not have maximized our sort of uh, return on our investment. So that, that was the reason why. I mean, from just quickly looking at it, I would say if you went for went back to planning, mm. you've got a higher demand for two beds yeah. and you would get a higher GDV selling at around 230, mm. seven, yeah, yeah. two beds. Yeah, yeah. So uh, my question was really coming from, did they kind of they, guide they you down the one bedroom route? Yeah, yeah, they, they, they did sort of um, encourage us to sort of go down the one bedroom route. And ultimately we, we saw that one beds rent very well. My, myself in, in the sort of lettings agency business in Cambridge, the one beds actually very high in demand. Um, they are especially, in Cambridge. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so for, for, especially with like Nottingham as well, like professionals and obviously there's going to be students. So we, we sort of see one beds as, as a good sort of market as well. What's the difference between the sales route that you're focusing on? And the, and well, the, no, the it's both actually. Let. No, but it's this both. guy is a lettings agent. So, you know, if someone comes into his door with a we're looking for a one bedroom flat, guess which flat is going to let first? But is, you're not a letting agent in not, this not particular in Nottingham, area? No, no. But obviously yeah. we, we've got very strong contacts. Uh, my uncle, who, who's my sort of uh, partner within this sort of company, he, he's based in Nottingham and at the same time, yeah. I think ultimately within the property field, it, it, we, because we have so many sort of contacts in Nottingham as well, the, the letting side we're not too concerned about because at the end of the day, UK, we, we are having a housing crisis. The, 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 the demand is there for, for the rentals for sure. So yeah, on, on that basis, that we just sort of were quite happy with keeping design and basically just getting started on, on the build. So right now, everything has been partially demolished and stripped out. This occurred yeah, last month. So we're looking to sort of commence a build in May. But Jason, just going on from Haley's point sure. for, for a second, um, Haley's point is that in Nottingham, yep. there's an oversupply of, of one, one bedroom beds. apartments exactly. which are unlet. Right, yeah. right. Okay, so the key thing with a project, with any property project, sure. is will there be demand for the end product yep. once it's finished? Yep. And I think that what Haley is saying to you is that the demand is greater mm -hmm. for two bedroom apartments in yep. Nottingham. There's a more of a dearth of supply, there's a right, shortage right. of of supply. Yep. So all we're saying, all we're suggesting is yeah, yeah. just take a step back, yeah. think about it and think yeah. about your end market. Yeah. What's going to be easiest for you to let? What's mm -hmm. going to be easiest for you to sell? Yeah. Um, and if there is the option to reconsider before you go and do the build, because the internal refurbishment of yeah, the yeah. existing structure should be, a, you know, sh should be reconfigurable. But once you start building, it's much more difficult to alter, alter yeah. things. I'll definitely take that on board and yeah, I'll go back and sort of research just to level up and, and do the calculations between the two beds. Thanks for the comment. Yeah, so as we often say, property is a, a people's game. Um, and you mentioned that you're, you're an estate agent, which is great. Yep. I think you mentioned you've done some things before, but if you could just tell us a little bit more about that in relation to what you're planning to do here, what's your experience? Yeah, yeah. so I, I started in property full time uh, about four years ago. So I, I was, I've been a resident, residential landlord for about 12 years now myself. Um, my previous working history is actually, I'm a chartered management accountant, so I still hold my qualification for accountancy, uh, working in industry. Um, I've invested in HMOs myself um, and through the YouTube, we've built up a lot of strong relationships with, um, with, with investors in Hong Kong. So I helped them convert HMOs as well. Um, did service accommodation previously as well. And we, we, we invest in a lot of single lets for our overseas investors. So on, year to date, we've probably done over 100 deals for our overseas investors. So okay. But for very, you, have you done something like this before? Not, not on this scale, no. Okay. Not, not on this scale. So, um, but ultimately, we do own the site and we, we put in our own money as well. So we, and, and to de de leverage our risk as well, we have a local 
experience um, project manager who's a principal designer with the building uh, surveyor experience to obviously help us along the whole way. Um, we're working with, we went out to tender and obviously worked with the best local building uh, construction company as well. So we were working very closely and they were involved in the partial demolition and the strip out. So we're just looking to basically commence in May. Do you own it cash? Sorry? Do you own it cash? Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we yeah. own it. So, so actually going back to the relationship game, my uncle, um, basically he, 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 he owned the building previously in his personal name. Um, he didn't really know how to sort of utilize it, etc. And basically when I, started in property full-time uh, about four years ago. I came on board, basically helped with the whole process of um, gaining planning permission, etc. And he's sort of kindly basically said, look, we'll just sort of transfer it into a limited company. We own it half. And basically, yeah, we, we started from there, really. I actually have a question around the, um, the, the large retaining wall at the back of the, um, back of the property. This, this bit. Um, yeah, so yeah. from the photograph that we're, look, yeah. that we're looking at and from the pack, yeah. um, that looks like a significant potential, potential, significant potential challenge um, insofar as um, drainage, um, surface water, water coming off the back of the buildings yeah. on, the, on the hill above. Yeah. Um, have you looked into? Yes, yes, yes. All structural engineers' uh, designs, the drainage has been looked at, so we've obviously spent money on that and there's no issues. The only, only slight issue because it's, it's the Nottingham Caves actually. Okay. So it, when it used to be ran as a pub, um, they used to actually have co like yeah, bands playing in there. So we're keeping that. So it's more like a sort of communal area to make use of this, the, the, the caves. The only slight issue which we're going through planning and it's not really going to hold anything back is the clearance on this fig tree, which is overhanging into our boundaries. So this is one of two self propagating fig tree in the country outside of the other one in Kew Gardens. Lucky you. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I mean, that's developers worth nine. Yeah, one yeah. of only two in the UK. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm yeah, running a mob when would, someone yeah. says that to me, I tell you. <laughs> and yeah, we're, we're just going through the council now just to get, yeah, get clearance, just to trim it back. But other than that, there's no issue with the drainage. When do you expect a decision from the local authority on being able to cut that tree back? We're, we're getting a arboriculturist um, on board as well. So they're helping with us. So. We're looking basically yeah, within the next month or so. Okay. Yeah. We, we contacted them a couple of months ago as well. I mean, the good the good news is Scott, they've they've got planning on this. Right? Yeah, yeah. So full planning. Already. It would be pretty harsh of the the council then to not give planning to sympathetically yeah. trim even the most protective yeah. of trees. So I think, provided you've got a good arboriculturalist to yeah. work his magic. Say that again. An arboriculturalist. <laughs> <laughs> Set three times. <laughs> So you've discharged conditions on the planning as yes, well? Yes, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, one of the conditions presumably would be related to that fig tree. That fig tree wasn't on it, on, it on the on initial it. conditions. It was only once we got chatting to the neighbours, they were saying, just be careful of that fig tree. And then, then we dug further and yeah, spoke it, to it, architect. Hopefully you didn't dig around the fig tree. It, that, that didn't get flagged up initially. So. Is there a TP1 order on the There's fig no, tree? tree protection? Yeah, yeah, not yeah, not, yeah, not there, protected? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one would have, I'm guessing it would have, but it never really got flagged up when, when we went through the whole planning process. Is it a conservation area? It's in a conservation yeah, area. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take a fig leaf off some of the numbers. <laughs> um, <Boom. laughs> 780,000 or something. 720. 720 for the yep. build cost. Um, now, that, that's, this is a blend of new build and yeah, uh, existing build. Yes, yes. Um, looks a bit light, doesn't it? Because you've spent 120 grand. Just 100, on 120 was total are. for the surveys, so surveys, yeah. consultants, etc. That was 62, and the 58 was to demolish this side. This has already been brought down, and the full strip out of inside. So everything has been unravelled, um, and we're looking basically for the detail quote to come back this week, hopefully. So the three. Um, what happens if it goes over? Sorry? Who's, who would fund it if it went over? Well, we would effectively, yeah, bring in more finance, um, which to be honest, yeah, we're, I'm sure within our network, we'll, 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 we'll bring in the extra finance. So that's not going to be too much of a concern. And at the same time, we de we're de deleveraging our risk again. So with the project manager on board, he's obviously going through the whole contract administration and there's a penalty if the contractor is to go overboard. I think we had a discussion last week and we're looking at about, um, it worked out about 700, so about 800 pounds per flat 
for the penalty per, per month. So effectively, we're covering any sort of uh, rates that we're going to be you borrowing. You mentioned in the beginning of your pitch, you're looking for a loan yeah. as opposed to a partner. Yeah. So, and um, why really have you come to us? Yeah, just, well, well uh, picked up because I don't think that's interesting any of us. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not so sure that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> to, be, to be honest with you, fair enough. It's yeah, it's, it's yeah. To be honest, I, I, I really hesitated as well. I was like, yeah, they're not going to be interested. I think my main priority is really to, to to obviously build the relationship and to sort of put myself out there, let you guys sort of know that I'm, I'm doing this project, um, and ultimately, if, if if you believe that I'm investable, then even if this project isn't workable, there, there's future opportunities. And as well as, as I've seen with other sort of uh, invest, uh, other developers as well within our sort of uh, CPA group as well, um, I, I'm always a believer that yeah, if you put yourself out there, you never know what might happen. And just to have the conversation, and because of my sort of Listen, connections, with well done overseas. for that. It's Thank great you. to put your foot forward, Nicholas. As a couple of the guys have highlighted, that retaining wall is a construction concern there's a cave there there's a fig tree there's a few sort of construction based um things to overcome which yeah, yeah. is great because i like a challenge yeah, yeah. um i've overcome far worse but <laughs> um in terms of you know your bill costs and things like that how have you split between say the the uh, existing build and the new build in terms of sort of the construction cost yeah how much higher is the new build element that you've quoted? The, the the basically the construction company gave us a, a detailed quote Okay. Um, well, they're, 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 they're going to come back with the detail quote this week. Okay, you don't know that exactly yet. Yeah, yeah. So, so, okay. but then now that everything's unravelled, there's no reason why whatever quote they come back with is it's going to sort of deviate too far from it. Yeah. So we'll we'll, we'll factor in. Um, to, to be honest, like some after after sort of stripping everything out, they they have commented that oh the 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 sort of beams aren't actually as bad as it initially was anticipated. So. They're actually, I'm, I'm hoping it will be slightly less than the 720 that they're coming in at. Yeah, okay, okay. And, and in terms of drainage, you've had a drainage survey. Yeah, yeah. And that runs into mains. Has, has that been CCTV? Yeah, 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 yeah. All the surveys costs are sort of within the pack as well. I've sort of broken yeah. it down. And, and you would, from what you've just said, it appears that you would be open to other offers, not just a 10% yeah, offer yeah, 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 yeah. for the money. You know, yeah, a bit absolutely. more creative you would consider. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think, yeah, being creative and being flexible. With the, the main thing is really, Building that working relationship, and then maybe maybe not in this project, but then there might be future projects to work together. Okay, so he's open to uh, other offers apart from loan offers. Um, who wants to be first with their creative ideas? I mean, the ten percent return is about as bad as one of Ranjan's <laughs> jokes, but um, <laughs> you know, just from the perspective of being an experienced investor and developer, yep. that just devalues us completely. Yep. You know, the, the, we, we want value for money on that experience, yeah. if that makes sense. Um, you know, I think if your numbers stack up, it's a good deal, but there would need to be a better return in it. And I'm trying to work out what that return should be. Um, I think the bill costs are probably a bit light. And I, and I think therefore key to putting in that 360,000 pounds is let's say they work out to be 300 grand more than you've estimated, which I think they might be. Mm -hmm. Um, where does that extra 300 grand come from? I think you kind of answered that question, mm -hmm. but let's say for example, just to reframe it, yep. I give you the 360,000 yep. and we agree a deal on what I'm getting for that money. Yep. And you do need an extra 300 on top of that. Are you absolutely certain you can get that money from elsewhere and that's not going to affect my return? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and of, even with like the development finance, they're gonna ask for a first charge, um, which we are, we'll, we'll obviously happily honor because we're, we're confident about the the build and obviously we've got the, the team to, to sort of work together to actually mitigate those risks. And your exit here is to refinance yep. to onto a buy to let single ASDs. Yep. Yep. And what do you what do you expect to be able to refinance at? Uh, if if we refinance, I'm looking it, it, by the time we, we pay back the investor, the, the angel, um, we, we, we don't need to pull out yeah, we don't need to pull out everything. We just need to pull out what we need to pay back the investor. So we know that obviously there's a big, the, the, the GDV is out coming in at 1.58. So yeah, paying back the 320 shouldn't really be too much of a concern for us. Like at the end of the day, we're, we're putting our own sort of capital in. So obviously the, the angels money is more important and, and we're gonna repay them back with their interest first. Okay, well, I'll make an offer. I'll give you the 360,000 pounds on the base, that's the maximum I'm giving you, but I mm. want 30% of my money. Right. 
a loan, yeah, 30% interest that's, yeah. on it. Okay. Um, so my issue with this deal is that it's a refinance and not a resale. Um, based off the basic research that I've done, I think there's an oversupply for rental property, one bedroom mm -hmm. rental properties. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's the sticking point for me. So my, I would be prepared to make an offer, um, but my offer would be subject to going back to planning, mm -hmm. getting seven two beds, yep. and um, actually selling. And then I what want 25%. <laughs> how are you, you, you going to get seven two beds when there's only eight one beds there? And the, you, you can't double the size of the... Eight, well, if eight you do one it, beds, one free bed. Eight one yeah. beds, one yeah. free bed. Yeah, but they're quite big, aren't they? A uh, total four, eight, five, three yeah. square feet. With a good architect, yeah. um, you will be able to get seven two beds. Yeah. I know that they will sell better. Yeah. I know that they will rent better. Yeah. Um, so you're protecting your, your downside, your mm -hmm. exit, if yeah, your yeah. primary strategy to sell doesn't work. Okay. And I'd want 25%. Okay, thank you. I'll let Scott go as a, as a new angel. I don't mind waiting until last. You are very backable. You're based in Cambridge. We do a lot of business in Cambridge. In fact, we do a lot of business right the way from Nottingham all the way across the, the, towards the east of the country um, and, and Cambridge and, and even to Norwich. I like the fact that you have, you have not said it in part of your pitch, but you're a chartered uh, management accountant. You invest a lot in yourself. You invest a lot in your education in terms of the property courses that you've been on. Um, I see that this is a debt deal rather than an equity deal, going back to um, uh, Haley's offer and going back to Paul's offer. Those offers really are equity offers rather than debt. Um, and I see this as a, as a, as a debt deal. Yep. So I'm, I'm gonna make you an offer, mm -hmm. okay? One of the things that you've not said with the development finance that you've been offered um, is whether there's any arrangement fees or exit fees, yeah, yeah. okay? Yep. So let's assume that they're there are fees involved. Yep. So the reality is, is that the offer that's been made to you is probably nearer the 12 or 13%. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna make you an offer for all of the money, but not just all of the money, I'll also include in there that if your costs go up by 100, 125 grand, mm -hmm. okay, which is possible given the location, given the issues with the, the, the wall behind it um, and the way that bill costs have increased yeah. more recently, and um, that we will also be able to increase your facility mm -hmm. in the event that you need more money, okay? Right. And in terms of the pricing, we will charge you 1% a month, mm -hmm. okay, which is 12% per annum yep. in total, which I think smashes any other offers out of the park as well as the development finance offers that you've uh, already received. Yep, perfect. And so I don't even think it's worth Nick speaking. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, <laughs> thank you. Well, he's got some balls coming in here, hasn't he, on his first, uh, first series. Uh, <laughs> Chucking those kind of comments out, and I don't don't blame you. That's a good offer, um, but I do hold. I actually do agree with you, Scott, that this is a debt led deal, um, and I think it should be restructured as such to maximise the value for the site for investors um, and the ability to get this built quickly and move on to another site. Actually, mm -hmm. so I'm looking actually one step ahead of all the other angels, which wouldn't be the first time that I've uh, been able to have uh, more foresight than they have, um, but. I'd make you an offer. Um, I'm going to make you, oddly, two offers. Um, you only get oh, one. You only get one. <laughs> well, I'm offering on the second deal that we haven't done yet, guys. Come on, <laughs> try and keep up. I know I'm trying to educate you. I didn't get that pack. No, exactly. Keep one up. option. Keep one option. Keep, keep it brief. Um, one option. It's sort of all, all, all wrapped up in the same offer. But um, I would rather go into business with you a bit longer term. That's what I'm saying. I want to talk about future deals. Yep. Um, I'm known for helping people build their businesses. Mm -hmm. Um, helping them raise extra large equity finance if needed. You've yep. got a perfect customer base for that, yep. uh, which we can tap into yep. using my experience and knowledge in this country. And mm -hmm. I think as a sort of more of a joint venture, yep. future could be really exciting. Yeah, yeah. So my offer is based upon the bigger picture. Um, on this deal, I'm happy to take 33% of the deal, which is essentially partnering with you and your uncle. Mm -hmm. um, but after this deal, I'd like to continue that SPV as a joint venture mm -hmm. um, at 40% share. Mm -hmm. So it'd be 60% right. in your favour, 40% in ours to go and grow the business much further. Right, right, cool. But I'll take less on this deal because you've already bought it and you're already going. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think you deserve more of the, 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 the equity share on this first yeah, yeah. deal. Okay. So let's see whether it's going to be a clean sweep of offers from all the angels. Um, I agree with what everyone said. It's a debt 
deal this one, not a equity deal. And the reason for that is because you've de-risked it. You've already yep. owned the site and you've got the planning and you're ready to go and you're stripped out. So at this, at this stage, there's minimum risk for people to well, come Nick's in. Nick's trying on. to take equity. Uh, he's trying to take uh, <laughs> some equity. Um, Joint so venture, Paul. Joint venture. <laughs> All right. You've got a variety of offers here. Um, uh, we I, wouldn't need the equity on future deals. Yeah. <laughs> good to know. Thank you. Um, I think you made a good pitch. Um, it's very interesting that you own the site and you're ready to go. Um, listen, my offer is very, very simple to you. Um, we'll lend you the money. It's, it's basically a debt-led deal for the build, uh, but alongside that, um, uh, mentoring, guidance, uh, and the help and support you need to get this to happen. But in exchange for that, we would be looking for 25% of the 25% uh, return on the on the debt that we are putting in. There you have it. You have um, uh, a clean sweep of offers. Um, you've got a pure debt-led. 1% uh, a month type of arrangement from Scott. Uh, you got 30% return, uh, but capped at 320k three, three, uh, down 360. from Paul. Was 360. it 360? 360. You've got a um, basically wants your business. <laughs> a no, third on I'm this gonna, one. I'm going to build his whole business, <laughs> Van Jan. I'm going to build his whole business and make him, make him highly successful <laughs> and try and beat out all the bad training he's had. <laughs> and, we've got, and we've got a, well, go back to the drawing board with a slightly different scheme. A better scheme. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and like a that. return of about 25%. So it's quite a bit to think about. Yeah, yeah. Or none so, of the above. And in fairness, I have just built a massive retaining wall and removed two fig trees. <laughs> <laughs> the, only, the only two in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. self propagating. <laughs> you do um, your due diligence on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I'm yeah, absolutely delighted that obviously you guys sort of have made me an offer. Um, I think part of the reason why I came on was obviously to actually push myself as well, just to see if, if and, and hoping that, um, that, that an angel would want to invest in our projects. Um, Obviously, like because we own the site already and we're so far down the, the project, um, I guess part of the reason was to actually sort of create new working relationships with you guys. Um, and on that basis, we wouldn't really want to give away much of the equity. So, yeah, I, I think with Scott, um, he's obviously given me the sort of best offer um, in terms of not giving away any of the equity. I'll definitely go back to checking on the two beds. Like. Oh, I'll charge you for that. Then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, and yeah, I'll, I'll be delighted. Yeah, if, Scott, um, if, if if we could sort of work together. That's fantastic. Thank you, Scott. I look forward to working with you. Definitely. Nice you. to meet you. It's a great deal, but I think that it's really important that that uh, Jason takes on the, um, the, the 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 work and the research um, that you, that you've looked into in terms of um, the demand for two beds versus one bed. And that's certainly something that I'll be working with him on um, to make sure that you can maximise not just the GDV, the end value of the, pro of the property, but also actually the demand for the end product, yeah. which actually will improve, um, hopefully, the liquidity of the product when the it's prob finished. The problem with I that is you've so. got to go back to planning, haven't you? you know, it's yeah, another it's, six, uh, month, nine month delay. Yeah, but it, well, I, I think it'd be worth it. And you'd be increasing the GDV as well. He wants to just well. build that though, doesn't he? And, and there's you'd no probably reason. lower your costs yeah, and, because and there's, no reason there's why you less can't units. Put the, put the services in, the utilities in, some of the, the, the footings in, just whilst you, you, you're running that, that process in, in parallel. And there's, there's lots of work that, that, that can be done. Can be done well. But from um, a risk point of view, this is a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. No existing borrowing on it. You're just lending on half the build cost. So whatever yeah. it does with it, it's, it you're still going to be preserving Absolutely. your capital. You know, the, the bottom, at the end of the day, if his costs do overrun and his GDV comes down, you know, let's say his costs go from 360 to, to um, sorry, 720 to 900, even a million. Okay, that stands us in at £500,000 on a GDV of somewhere between, I know we said 1.58, but let's take a worst case scenario, yeah. it might be 1.4 to 1.6. Mm. Okay, from, a, from a, a debt, from a lending point of view, it's still a great deal to do. Delighted to have done it. In reality, he was, wasn't going to accept their offers, was he? He's too far progressed. Well, he wasn't going to accept yours, Paul, 30% return. <laughs> he wanted 33% I mean, equity. Interest rates, I've heard, are going up, but not that he, badly. 
Oh, are you an angel or a loan shark, I think? <laughs> well, no, look, in fairness, I wanted 30% on my cash. You wanted 33% of his company. That's a lot worse. <laughs> yeah, but I was going to spend the time to build his company. Well, and in fairness, I would have helped him out as well. Well, sharks is a completely well, other show, isn't it? Scott, are you, are you going to be able to help him out with that? Yeah, we've, we've got lots and lots of customers who are, you know, we're on multiple projects with them. Um, 17, 18, 90, 20 different projects. Um, and we've seen them um, grow and create wealth for themselves, their families, um, and actually learn through their, um, through, through their journey. Um, and we, we help people on that journey. Um, and that's what our business is all about. Well, what does John make of it? I mean, he's not a big fan of being a bank. Let's find out. Jason's obviously very plausible, very experienced. They've bought the property already. I think everybody wanted to do this deal, and I would as well. I'm frustrated that I'm not there to do it. Um, he chose Scott. Uh, it's nice to see Scott warming up to the challenge of being an angel. It's not easy. You know, you're going into that environment with four very experienced uh, property uh, dealers, investors, been at it a long time. And Scott, of course, uh, comes from a financial background, banking background, uh, and he's come over to the dark side. So it takes a bit of getting used to, but well done, Scott. I think you've got a good deal there. Well, we've had an amazing Series 6 of Property Elevator. Hayley and Scott fitted in like a glove and they did some pretty impressive deals. We hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. I'm Elizabeth Warburton and you've been watching Property Elevator. <laughs>